What's up guys? Uh, today we are going to be doing a coilover install on our buddy Caesar's 2015 Lexus RCF. Uh, right now the car has unknown lowering springs. I looked at the back ones, they're black. I wonder if that's like, no RSR is light blue, right? Uh, RSR came to mind, but I don't think RSR makes Lexus. They do make Lexus. They probably make Lexus parts, but I don't think that's this. I don't think, I think they, they go they this do, aggressive. I think they do blue or red, if yeah. I remember correctly. Yeah. Um, I have no idea. Um, black is Ibach. Could be, could be Ibach. Pro, that's very low for a pro kit. That is very low for a pro kit. We'll find out once yeah. we take these off, honestly, and yeah. you know. But. So, uh, we're just nerding out over springs, but uh, we have a set of silvers. Uh, true point, uh, true with true rears. So we have them right here, looking beautiful. They do look quite really nice. I like the uh, color scheme here. Yeah, the color scheme is actually pretty nice. We'll just go ahead and pull some of this stuff out of the way. Each other in the box. So, I'm assuming this is a rear, it could be a fucking no idea. We'll find out. So, these are a set of Silvers, Neo Max coilovers. Uh, these are probably the fronts because they have the adjusters in the tops yep. right here. And I believe the rears have the extended adjusters to come through. Yep. Yep. So uh, more than likely this is one of our fronts. But uh, these are a pretty nice setup. They are they're clean. This is a really good color scheme. I actually. like the color scheme a lot. Yeah, the nice like gunmetal yep. with the actual like bright silver for the adjusters and top hats. Um, like I said, this set of coilovers we are putting in is a true rear coilover which means it is all one body um the factory car comes with a divorce setup so it has strut and spring separate um, very much like a g35 or 350z yeah that yeah. type of stuff a lot of new cars do that the fit is that the yards um, did it yeah yep. so that's new car stuff um we're going to be currently leaving the rear spring buckets in uh we might delete them later they're typically toe adjustment yep um we'll find out if we're doing that not really like us yeah but um i looked these up they're like 1600 or 1700 dollars okay somewhere in there. solid price yeah close to kw basically kw v3s i think are like 18 19. yeah sounds about right yeah so yeah. so no, these are going to be really nice um these springs are definitely too low for this car yeah in they this are. format they are uh it looks good but yeah, like if you want to swing around we'll get like a nice side how, profile how low they are. yeah it's it's like it's, I mean, it looks good. It does look good. The rear is definitely lower. We were talking about this earlier. The rear is definitely lower on yeah. this. Um, I think the rear is about maybe an eighth to a quarter lower than. Say like a quarter at least. Yeah. yeah about that. Um, so we're going to replace these. This car will be higher than this um, because we have new wheels and yep. tires and yep. stuff. Um, so there's a lot of cool stuff going on the car today. So uh, let's get cracking. Yeah. That. yeah. That's not really good. No, no, no. I always thought these wheel locks were really weird. Mm -hmm. This one especially because it's actually like even on each side. You know how they make the design so it's like only goes one way? Yeah. This one goes like all of the ways. It's kind of interesting. All right, so when you're doing this, you have a 19 mil on your left side, it's kind of hard to see because these brakes are gigantic. Uh, and you also have a 19 right here. Um, I'm going to try to do this without taking out as much kind of excess as possible. Um, some people like to pull the sway bar, which is the mounts back here, and they'll break loose this ball joint right here. 
Uh, I need to do this anyways, but for the sake of getting the coils out in the least work as possible, again, I'm just gonna try to pop this bottom mount, uh, get the top loose, and then try to just kind of swing this down with as much force and get it out. Okay, one other thing we're taking out here, you can see there's an ABS line right here and a bolt on right here as well. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and pop those loose just so when this pulls down, you're not putting any strain on these lines. So, the stock strut and lowering spring is out. Turns out I was correct. It is RSR. So that's pretty cool. Um, surprisingly low for RSR. Yeah? Uh, I don't know, RSR is actually pretty low. Usually. They've definitely, I've, I've definitely seen them run some like low stiff stuff. I just was expecting, I guess, what would you call that? Like a two inch drop from stock? Two and a quarter? Two and a quarter is very aggressive though. <laughs> I think like two. Bless you. Yeah. But uh, we got the front out. So now we're going to pop the A arm off. A arm off. Since we're doing that yep. camera install. Yep. And then the uh, coil over in. Yep. Okay. So for the coilovers, we have the new camber arms in. We're in the middle of that install as well in a separate video. Um, and we're going to pop the new coilover. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. These okay. things are tight. So the uh, coilovers are mounted at the top. We have yet to do the bolt in the bottom position. It's right there. Um, we are now in the process of uh, basically bolting in our new camber arm first. Which is right up here. Then we will do the bottom bolt and the sway bar end link. And then we will tighten everything down and then we'll start adjusting for height yep. from there using the center point on the hub once the wheel is mounted. See, just kind of a, a rough estimate of where we're gonna well, land. It, it was a little more difficult with these because the stock assembly is very long. And if we had adjusted that to that length, which is kind of how you typically do coilovers. It was like at the top of the coilover. Well, not only that, but like, I feel like we would have been trying to kill ourselves just to like slot it even in here. That's yeah, it was. exactly. So, you know, yeah, so yeah. we'll get it sorted. Okay, so. In order to get the bottom mount of the coilover in, in case this is a, uh, your new or your first coilover install, generally what you're going to want to have is a smaller jack that you can move easily. And what you'll do is put it under the control arm, and jack it up until you start seeing the bottom mount hole lining up. You may need to rotate the strut clockwise or counterclockwise and push it forward or backward to line it up on the control arm. And then from there, um, I would recommend using a flathead such as this because you may find that your hole might be too far in or out. So you can just use the flathead to kind of finagle it until your bolt lines up, pop it through, tighten it down. Yep. It's nice because you can see the Muteki like logo didn't even move. Yeah, right. Once it hit 80. There you go. Okay, so we are on the continuation of the Coilover Saga. It's not really a saga. It's actually been a pretty straightforward install, despite the subtle learning curve of removing the uh, ball joint for the camber arms. But uh, we are moving on to the rear. So, we have the rear in the air, as you can see. The trunk panels have to come out because we have extending adjusters for the dampening. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna take these trunk panels out real quick. Uh, it's pretty straightforward stuff. You just have to remove the carpet, remove the floorboard. Um, we probably will not have to remove this foam piece that holds the spare tire or the jack, but, but we, we will have to this. we will have to remove the center piece because usually that will wrap. And this is on almost any car. I mean, this is pretty universal as far as that goes. Yeah. The center piece always overlaps over the side panels 
Yeah. So you'll have to pull the stuff out to... So centerpiece comes out, then the side panels... You might have to have to pull Actually... Just to make life a little easier. Yeah. And there's no spare tire to deal with on this one, so... Might as well. I'm trying to find out what's still holding it in. Yep, we'll figure that out. Yep, and we'll get back to you. Okay, so this is a lot more difficult than we would have expected it to be, but I guess Lexus is like that, it seems. That's a recurring theme. Well, it makes sense because, like, it's an expensive car, and you want expensive cars to be put together nicely. You know, the trims are pieces are very nice. They are. We'll give it that. However, that being the case, you also have to remove roughly 70, not really, but like... 79. Yeah, clips to um, move these panels. It up. was so not 79 clips, I was joking. It was more like 27 clips. It's probably about 30, yeah, somewhere yeah, in that range. Yeah. Um, and there's still a couple to pull on that side, but yeah. whatever, we'll get there. You can see we got this piece off. Uh, there was like one, two, three, and then prize up. Um, once you get all the clips out of, well, you take the floor out, you take the foam out, you take yep. the clips out of this. Yep. You take the clips one, out two, of three. this whole top piece and remove it. This was like eight. Yeah. Then um, you have 10 mils that are hold the luggage. Yeah, um, the luggage. Um, which I'll show you how to secure tie down anything. Open those so you guys know. Flip this up, pull it out. It's just a tab in here, so just flip up and pull out. Yep. Uh, and once you finally get all this stuff done, you can move the panel. Yeah, you don't have to pull the panel, fortunately. That's a little saving grace. Yeah, and you can see your suspension there. Now, um, Caesar does have the extended adjusters, so we're gonna put a little hole somewhere in the panel and then run the adjusters through, so he doesn't need to like ever do this again basically yeah yeah that's 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 it but uh the panels are a pain to remove um or well at least move enough to get access but once you have them out of the way you can see there's plenty of room to get to this yeah. it's not like a miata yeah you remember the rear driver's side whatever side the gas tank i think it's on the driver's side the gas tank how the gas lines go right over oh those. gosh that s2000 too yeah well, i had to do that when i did the jic coilovers on the s2000 well you oh remember we put gosh. the s tex in the, the yeah oh gosh yeah yeah, at least this is not a convertible. At least there's tons of room now. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to get the wheels off um, and then kind of address where we're at down below and start pulling stuff off. Yep. Let's do it. What's up? What's up? So yeah. we removed the upper, what is this, uh, this control is, arm? This is actually the bolt for the control arm up yeah, top, the upper control um, arm. which we took out because we need to replace the control arm. Yes. Uh, and probably to give us a little more room, we'll find out. Um, but I think lowers, it's going to swing the brake out. I don't because it has that armor here. Oh, is there and, another? And, and right here on the bottom. Toe arm? Uh, toe arm is this guy down here at the bottom. Yeah, that's... Wait. So this is going to be... Toe, uh, cat, no, not cat. Uh, Some of these are just trailing arms. They're not really adjustable. Like, this one's not adjustable. This one's not adjustable. You can see the toe arm down there has an adjustment on the inside. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out, because there were there was an arm on the 350 that was like a, another control arm. It was toe... Um, I mean, all that's never really camber. Been, that's all that's ever. And really there was done. a third one that we had, trailing. Yeah, but that's just like you know, oh. that that's a little bit. Right now we're letting some WD-40 set in for the end links on the sway bar because they are. Yeah. So the the end link sits forward, and so like as you're driving, all the dirt and stuff just yeah, kind of like just all junked up in there accumulates. And the bottom mount portion, it looks like it bolts into the it bolts into the spring bucket. There's a bolt down here. Well, for the sway bar, yeah. Because the sway bar bolts right behind it. Well, I'm wondering to myself if we can just unbolt the bottom of the mount from there, from the, directly on the bottom. Which one? Which one? Directly under the uh, bucket. That's not for this, that's not for this thing. Isn't that for the, for the bottom of the sway bar end link? Well, yeah, but if we get this out, we don't need to take that out because we'll just pop the sway bar back out. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Well, so we're gonna get the sway bar out, um, and then that's the bottom, as far as the coilover is concerned. And then from the top, we have the three bolts up here loosened already. Those are 14, deep socket, easy peasy. Okay, so we have started removing the uh, rear toe arm, which the spring bucket's on, because we're gonna take that spring out, because this rear is a true rear setup. However, to remove the shock, you have to take this little do that out well it, it's and i mean it would, it would have run into the problem putting it back in too but like new cars use these fun felty liners to make them more quiet i guess to make them more okay. from whence you came kind of because it's not <laughs> anyway that's gonna sit there for a sec so yeah. uh shock is out 
Shocked out. Shocked out. Um, we tried to take out this lower control arm bolt, and um, it basically said no. Yeah. Didn't work, so we took out the, uh, like I said, the tow arm bolt, and the tow arm can kind of drop down and do the thing. So, yeah, that's where we're at. Okay, so. Hi. Coilovers are in. We're going to make some fine tuning on adjustments, but uh, it's pretty straightforward stuff. You feed the top mount in. It is an isosceles triangle. It's got like a cheese, cheesy wedge on yeah. the bottom. It's kind of rounded. So you're going to want the flattest spot to be to the inside of the car. Save yourself some trouble of trying to figure out how that lines up. And then uh, from there, just make sure that you are lined up on the bottom as you jack up the toe arm to get back up into there. Um, you'll have to, you know, obviously reattach the toe arm, jack it up into there, get that aligned, pop those bolts through, and then from there, figure out how uh, high or low you want to be by adjusting the threads using the spanner wrenches. Don't touch the bottom collar because that'll start mm -hmm. adjusting your preload. Well, actually, if you when you get your coils new, these are going to be a little loose. Make sure to tighten them up. Yes. Um, but yeah, this is your preload. You don't want to mess with this. The preload is how much tension is already on this spring when it's in the car. And if you mess with this preload because you want to be extra low, which I mean, I get in some cases, but whatever. Um, These if coil you this, go very low, so you should not have to do that. Yeah. I think you can lay frame without adjusting your preload on these. I agree with you. Um, but just in general, try not to adjust your preload because when it comes to ride quality with coilovers, uh, people will mess with this thinking that's where it needs to be adjusted because typically they'll come from like ground control, coilover sleeves, that type of stuff where that is how they are adjusted. Uh, on one piece coilovers with an adjustable bottom mount, please never touch this. Yep. Uh, tighten it up make it stay there. All your adjustments are gonna be done from your bottom mount. If you wanna get the light in there real quick. Um, on these in particular, you would loosen this collar here and then you would twist the entire assembly from just this top one and you would twist it in and it would go down. You would twist it this way and it would come up. Yep. Uh, and the whole assembly will turn, so. And by our measurements, every 12 threads is about one inch. On these in particular. Yeah, so um, if you wanna come down or up one inch, you know you need to move about 12 threads. About 12, yeah. Yeah, count your threads with like a poker or something like that and then double check your work with a measuring tape. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So, uh, like I said, don't mess with your preload. Adjust your bottom. There you go. Yes, indeed. Yep. All right, it is no longer dark and we have finished the coilover install. We've also had the car aligned um, because there were front and rear camber arms that were installed at the same time. If you guys haven't seen those videos, you can check out the upper camber arm here and you can also check out the, the front upper and you can also check out the rear camber arm here. Um, so let's take a look at how it looks. I would say compared to the RSR springs that were on it, it was dumped on the RSRs. It was really low on the RSRs. It was actually RSRs. very dumped on the RSRs. Yeah, and it just looks, it's, I think it's a really good height right now. I this think, honestly, really I, I am very happy with the height that the final, because yeah. I did have to set this about three times, I believe. Right. Um, to, to kind of achieve that final uh, look. Yeah, but, so we're running, what, about half a finger? Yeah, just about, yeah. just about half a finger. And maybe just a hair more in the front to prevent rubbing on turns. Yeah. Uh, something for you guys to note uh, on the front there are a couple tabs uh, on the fender that just need to be folded up a little bit for the record real quick uh, you can feel them on your car there's one right here and there's one right here yeah and that's if you're running aggressive fitting wheels these are a nine and a half plus 30 on the front with a two uh, what was it a 245 right two 255 35 19. Yeah. Uh, which is properly is, is actually the proper size. Um, Caesar can actually bump up to a 265 if he wants to, um, as far as fitment is concerned, because of the nine and a half is not as aggressive in the front, and there's a little bit of space for tire. But I don't think it's a big deal. Um, I think the ride height is really really solid. Um, I definitely you drive don't have any height. complaints. Oh yeah, yeah. I would drive it at this height. <laughs> This is this is fantastic. No, I think the height is is seriously really good. Um, you guys saw on the install. The only real pain that I can remember because it's actually been a little while was was it the rear lower control arm or was it the front? I think it was the rear lower control arm just knocking them back up. Oh yeah, that was annoying. Yeah, that was a little annoying. Yeah. Now, there was uh, there was a certain process you had to do. I think we had to go from inside out 
Yeah. Yeah, so that was a little annoying, but otherwise uh, the process was pretty straightforward. If you guys are installing control arms at the same time, you're gonna have a much easier job doing this install. Lower control arms. Uh, yes. Yeah, well, honestly, because, you'll, the, you'll have an easier time even if you do pull the rear upper camber arm, even if you just take it out and put it back in, the stock one, whatever. Yeah. Uh, the front, the only reason the front becomes easier is because you're removing the ball joint set from the front knuckle assembly. Correct. Yeah, and that'll give you a little bit of clearance. Yeah, you don't have to pull the entire arm out if you're not replacing them at the but time. But you're already there, you know, so. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Um, one other thing, real quick. When I went to take it to get aligned, uh, because I took the time to match the factory arm length in the front and the rear, they, you know, they put it on the machine and it was basically still in factory spec. They had to do very little in the way of adjusting past like setting the camera where I specifically wanted it to get it aligned. Right. So that was good. So if you take that time, you know, and the easiest way to kind of check with your uh, your bolts is you can like slip the bolt through, hold it there, and then kind of adjust out and check the length. Yeah. And then that'll at least keep you within close enough spec that if it is off a lot, you can take it to the alignment shop without ruining your tires, or in most cases, be pretty spot on. Yeah. Totally. Totally. Totally true. All right, so that is going to do it. We're gonna get out of the sun. It's a bit bright today. Yeah, it's a, even even with sunglasses, it's a little. It's also a bit warm today. Yeah, just just a bit. Just a little. Um, so that's gonna do it for our coilover install video. Let us know what you guys thought of the install video. If you guys have looked into Silver's Racing coilovers, if uh, uh, how would you say the ride quality is? Honestly, better than anything I've driven on. Um, I think that may have to do with the car itself as well. Right. But like when driving this car with these coils at this height, it feels amazing. It like OEM plus almost, right? Yeah, it's yeah. not It's not a very, you know, there's not a lot of aggressiveness in ride quality. Um, it feels really good. Yeah. And that also does come down to, to keeping sure your preload's good and adjusting your struts properly. Yeah. yeah. So let us know what you guys thought of the video. If you guys are looking into Silver's coilovers, we definitely recommend them. The install was pretty straightforward. If you guys have any more requests for Lexus RCF related content, whether it's maintenance, installs, mods, whatever, let us know in the comments down below. Yep. And if you like the video, please make sure to like, subscribe, ring the notification bell. And we'll see you in the next one. And we appreciate you guys. But not this heat. But no. yes, the RCF.